Three years of work on my game and nothing. No sales, no wish lists, no money for the Steam holiday sale. I don't know what I did wrong. I need a Christmas miracle. Or a magic Santa hat with time traveling powers. Time to fix my game. All right, this game is gonna be amazing. I'm gonna be rich and famous just like you. I think I'll just start with all my art assets. Holy sh And this is the first mistake. Who are you? I'm you, and I'm here to save you from all of your beginner game dev mistakes. I'm just making my art assets. What's wrong with that? Exactly. You spend way too much time on your art during the prototype phase. By focusing on art during this early phase, you have less time to devote to making sure the gameplay within the prototype is actually fun. I don't even use those assets. I completely changed my art style later on. So I should just work on the ugly gray box prototype? If you had spent time on the gameplay loop instead, you would have had a much stronger gameplay foundation. Hence the first mistake, not focusing on gameplay early. Making a game involves a lot of moving parts and it's extremely easy to get distracted by all the things that need to be built. Making a finished character asset and polished textures may make the prototype more visually appealing, but the main thing that will make people wishlist, buy, and play your game is the game part. Visuals may grab someone's attention, but the gameplay will make them stay. Who are you talking to? Hey, I'm back. What are you working on? Oh God, I made it just in time. I followed your advice and, and focused on gameplay. I'm just doing some, some play testing, which is super great, but my brother in game dev, you're just asking your friends and family to play test. Well, yeah, but asking strangers is hard and scary. And who's gonna play your game? And do you think your friends and family are gonna give you solid critiques? Oh my goodness, this is unreal. You're the best game developer ever. Yeah, I guess not. So what should I do? Well, for starters, ask your friends and family, but take their feedback with a grain of salt. You want strangers, anyone and everyone to test your game. Playtesting often gets pushed aside during the development process, or you put it at the very end. But in reality, you want people to be testing your game early and often. Playtesting is really market research. It lets you know how people are receiving your game, your mechanics, your art style, and gives you an idea where you might be blind to certain issues with your game. So get initial impressions, favorite parts, parts they hated, and things they think are missing. Every piece of information is useful. You don't need to implement every single idea or change, but at least be aware of how your game is being received. Okay, so focus on gameplay and have people test it so you can refine it. Right, and while you do the play testing, you're also getting networking contacts for future tests and potential buyers once the game is finished. Okay, that, that sounds good. So what else can I fix? Like, I'll do anything. Yeah, that's kind of your next mistake. Warning may cause an increase in Christmas movie reenactments. Uh-oh. What was that? Home Alone? Yeah, I've been waiting for you. Well, that's not good. Well, maybe if you tell me my final mistake, you can go back to the present. Right, good idea. Um, okay, uh, I remember this. I was crunching, trying to get all the features working together. It kept breaking every time I, I added something. Yeah, this, this plugin won't work. It says it works for massively multiplayer RPG action adventure racing open world VR games. Okay, maybe I added one too many features. Making games is sometimes like the wild, wild west. A free open world of opportunity, and that freedom can be a big problem. We all love games, and it might be why you started making games altogether. And sometimes you might want to add every single feature from every favorite game you've ever played. So when you're feeling the urge to add a new gameplay feature, ask yourself, does it fit my existing design? If you answered no, then focus on getting what you have to a point where you can add new features. 
And if you want to add something anyway, prototype it and play test it. And you'll have a better game in no time. Wait, I didn't need to do I'm back. Now that's a Christmas miracle. It brings me to one final piece of advice. While you don't want to introduce too many new features, don't be afraid to borrow from some of your favorite games. Just like I borrowed from some Christmas movies for this video. You likely got into game development because of the games that inspired you to do so. And sometimes listening to that inspiration can keep you going when the going gets hard. And if you find yourself losing motivation, check out this video to learn how to deal with burnout. Now to burn this hat. Where do those instructions go? Wait. Christmas is just around the corner.